Hey guys, welcome. I'm Brandon. I've been making tutorials and helping people get into game dev for over three years now. And I don't want to waste your time. So let me just say right off the bat that this video is not going to contain any fluff and it's not going to have any soft skills. I'm sure you all already know that in order to make games, you need to be determined and you need to have perseverance and you need problem solving skills and all that good stuff. So let's just skip right past all that. This is a video about the only five skills you need to make amazing video games. So starting off with with number one, and in my opinion, this is the most important skill that you need to acquire in order to make games, okay? And that is programming. And programming is completely and utterly unavoidable. Even if you've seen videos and tutorials and classes out there with thumbnails that say no coding required, what they mean is that that course includes visual scripting. In a very different way, that is still programming. If you have kids at home, you know exactly what I'm talking about. My daughter, she's 10 years old and she loves Scratch. She has made over a hundred projects in Scratch at this point. And despite Scratch's simplicity, it is still programming. There is a flow of logic that you need to put into the program in order to make what you want to have happen happen. And it doesn't really matter whether you get into a visual scripting solution or whether you choose to learn a more traditional TypeScript programming language. This is still fundamentally the number one skill that you are going to need to master in order to make games. All of those awesome ideas that you have in your head for how your game is going to work, all of the cool and unique mechanics, the rules for how your actual game works, how the enemies behave, absolutely everything. It's all dependent on how you code these things. And it is challenging to learn programming, I will tell you that. But I will also tell you that by trade, I'm not a software designer or engineer or anything like that. I come from a finance background. I went to college for accounting. The closest I ever came to code was entering some fancy formulas into an Excel spreadsheet. So when I stumbled across game development, coding was a completely new concept to me. So I've been there, I get it. I can definitely say that yes, it is challenging to learn, but to those of you who have never touched a line of code before, it's probably not as challenging as you've made it out to be in your head. I can also say from experience that when you see code on another person's screen and you don't know how to read code yet, it looks like something from the matrix or something ridiculous like that, but it's just logic and problem solving. That's all it is. It'll be a little bit of a struggle to learn it for the first bit, but then it's gonna click and when it clicks, it really clicks. Okay, so after programming, the next skill that is the most important is for you to master your game engine. Whichever one you choose, even if you go off the beaten path and you decide to make your own game engine, it doesn't matter, you still have to master it. You need to know how to load and unload scenes. You need to know how to handle physics or at least some basic collision detection. You really need to know how to be able to read input from a keyboard and a mouse or a gamepad. And you need to know how to use your engine's profiling and debugging tools. So really, programming and knowledge of your game engine, they go hand in hand. A good chunk of the time, what you're going to be doing is using programming to manipulate certain components that are attached to game objects or actors. And oftentimes those components will already have been built in for your engine. And with these two skills alone, with programming and mastery of your game engine, you can make a game. It might not be a fantastic game, but you can make a game with rudimentary shapes, whether it's 2D or 3D, it doesn't matter. You can use a square, circle, cube, sphere you can make a game with just these two skills. So with just these two skills, we have the basics down. All the rest of the skills that we're going to talk about will allow you to level up and make a great game, not just a game that works. So let's move on to the next most important skill that you're going to need, and that is art. If you're anything like me, then you're probably interested in getting into game development because you were extremely inspired by some game in your past that you really loved. For me, it was Hollow Knight and Ori was a close second. I really, really love Metroidvanias. And if you're not familiar with either of them, both of those games have just the most incredible visuals. And having the ability to create a game that has amazing visuals like that has always been out of my reach because I'm not 
very good at art. I have talked about that multiple times on this channel. And I do have my wife Nikki on board as my artist, which is incredible, but there are still certain situations where it would really help me out if I had at least some basic art skills, even if it's just so I'm not so reliant on her all of the time. And that is why I'm so grateful to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. You've probably already heard that Skillshare is the largest online learning community with literally thousands of classes ranging in topics from game development, illustration, graphic design, music, productivity, programming, and just so many more, I can't possibly even list them all. And there are classes for every single skill level, whether you're already really good and you're just looking to level up a little bit, or even if you're starting from square one and you need to learn the absolute fundamentals. They have a strong focus and learn by doing, which means that you can apply what you're learning right away. You can share your project and you can get feedback from the community. All classes are curated by industry experts and they're all on demand, which means that no matter what your skill level is at, no matter how busy you are, you can go through them at your own pace. One class I really appreciate is Create 2D Tile Sets with Inkscape. It's a class that is a step-by-step -step guide to making beautiful tile sets. Even if you're like me and you're not much of an artist. And I appreciate it because I love working with tile sets. It is my favorite way to make levels. And this is just one example. There are so many game dev art related classes on Skillshare from learning how to design unique and memorable characters to creating beautiful parallax backgrounds. So if you are ready to learn something new or you're just wanting to take your game dev skills to the next level, check out my link down below in the description because the first 500 people that use that link will get one free month of Skillshare just so that you can try it out and see if it's a good fit for you. Okay, so we've covered the skills that allow you to make a game and now to make your game look good. But what about making your game fun to play? That is where design comes in. And I would argue that this is probably one of the most difficult skills to learn. It's not concrete like programming. Programming is syntax, it's memorization, it's problem solving. But design is a skill that is much less tangible, but it's no less important. And game design involves many, many different areas. We can talk about your general game design, how your game actually works, your level design, your enemy design, your character design, and not just visually what they look like, but how they actually interact with the world and what kind of mechanics they have. A really good example of this is Ori. When I first started playing Ori, I was a little bit annoyed by how floaty his jump was and that you couldn't get a lot of height with his double jump. But if you take a look at Ori's level design, they are usually very long and not very tall, which makes perfect sense for Ori's moveset. Now, there are some incredible resources out there to study game design like the Art of Game Design by Jesse Shell. But honestly, playing games and playing them with a little bit of a critical eye, playing them and seeing what you appreciate, taking note of what makes them fun will go a really long way for you. Whether you're alone or not, I have a buddy that I game with almost every single week. We're currently playing Dying Light 2. It's an amazing game. And we'll often just mid-mission, we'll just stop and pause the game to look at like the tiniest detail, whether it's some little trick of how the level is laid out, whether it's a particle system, doesn't matter. The point is you can learn a lot by looking at a game that was masterfully done and appreciating and taking notice of the little details and the things that you find make it fun. And the last skill that you need to make an amazing game, and I will preach this forever and ever and always, that is effects. By this, I'm really talking about particles and shaders. Now, those things go together with juicy sound effects and with screen shake and all kinds of things like that, but good sound effects, you can find those for free online very, very readily, very easily these days. Screen shake, usually any game engine worth its salt has some sort of system for that built in these days. But particle systems and shaders, there are systems for that in your engine, I promise you that, but it's still a big learning curve for how to do those. And all of these things, the particles, certain shader effects, sound effects, screen shake, all these things, they come together to make a game juicy or to make a game have really good game feel. And players really, really appreciate good game juice. This is what takes a game beyond just being fun and also makes it satisfying. And I can speak from experience here. I very recently participated in a game dev competition and I don't think I'm allowed to say anything about it just yet, so I'm not gonna give any details or spoil anything. But I will say that the top contenders of that game dev competition all heavily utilized 
game juice, good game feel. The judges really went for that because players really appreciate that. The last thing that I will say about effects is that having a lack of drawing or artistic ability for me has made me feel powerless at certain times during my game dev journey, but being able to make awesome particle effects and being able to make shaders in particular has really brought a lot of that feeling of power back to me. You can make a really good looking game with a good use of shaders and with good use of particles. So if you wanna make games, those are the five skills that you need to master. That is all I got guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next week. Bye.